Hi, hi, my lovely readers. Welcome to Read with Kellan. So guys, today I'll be reading a book about Sleeping Beauty. It is called Waking Beauty by Leah Wilcox, illustrated by Lydia Monks. Now guys, as we all know in the story of Sleeping Beauty, we know that the prince, he is the one that wakes Sleeping Beauty from her deep, deep sleep. But in this story, he's having quite a difficult time. He's not a good listener because the fairies are trying to tell him what he should do to wake Sleeping Beauty, but he's just not listening. So that makes it even more difficult to wake her. So he is going to do a lot of crazy stuff. So let's let's start reading. Let's see. Let's. Let's go into the book and let's start reading and let's see what he actually does to try to wake Sleeping Beauty. And if you have your copy, guys, you can get your copy and read along with me. I hope you like this book as much as I did. Once upon a Saturday, in search of dragons he could slay, Prince Charming heard a dreadful song that shook the land for miles around. It thundered from a castle tall. He raced to scale its prickly wall. A dragon lies within, he cried, and hand on sword, he crept inside. Then hung his head. O oh, rats, he said, it's just a snoring girl in bed. He peeked behind her canopy. And spied some fairies, one, two, three. She'd snore this way one hundred years. They whimper through their fairy tears. That long? He frowned. She sure sleeps late. Wake her up. Why do you wait? The fairies called. Don't be so dense. She'll only wake up for a prince. We see you finally made the trip. Now give the girl a little lip. Okay, he said. If you insist, he drew his mouth up in a twist. And hollered, wake up, lazy bones. Her snores drowned out the fairy's groans. They shook their heads. No, not like this. You have to wake her with a... Hey, I know. He tapped his head and started jumping on the bed. Beauty shut up, hoops and all, then sailed down like a parasol. This did not wake the maiden fair, but loosened the cobwebs in her hair. The fairies all began to hiss. She'll only wake to true loves. Wait, Prince Charming waved his hand. Don't worry, girls, I understand. And stooping over her snoring snout, he dumped a water pitcher out. On she slept, she did not stir. Take dust had turned to mud on her. The feisty fairies grabbed his ear, making certain he could hear. Take careful aim you must not miss. You have to wake her with air. Oh, I know what you were planning. Prince Charming spied a castle cannon. He stuffed the sleeping beauty in. She soon came shooting out again. Kaboom! She fell into the moat where all her hoops kept her afloat. Still on, she snored as frightened trout and crocodiles jumped right out. Prince Charming fished the girl ashore. The fairies yell, Enough! No more! They fluttered round him feeling frantic. How can you be so unromantic? 
she won't have ever after bliss until you wake her with a kiss. The prince's knees began to shake. His noble heart began to quake. One hundred years of morning breath. Whoa, that could be the kiss of death. He poked her muddy matted curls. I've heard that there are germs on girls. He wiped her mouth clean with his shirt. I hope he squeak. This doesn't hurt. His puckered lips met beauties. Smack. And in her sleep, she kissed him back. Prince Charming smiled. Not bad, he said. The maiden sat up in her bed. She stretched and yawned and rubbed her eyes. Then much to everyone's surprise, she popped the Prince Charming with her fist. Who said that you could have a kiss? The pummeled prince slid down, poor chap and fell asleep on Beauty's lap. Beauty groaned and bent to shake him. Fairies, tell me how to wake him. Just let the poor boy sleep, they said, and tired too, they went to bed. But fairy tales can't end like this. We know she woke him with a kiss